Hello, today we'll be talking about a DC motor and then why should we use a capacitor with a DC motor. We'll go over how to control it, how it works, pros and cons, and then finally as mentioned, we'll cover why do we need a DC a capacitor with a DC motor. So how to control a DC motor? It is pretty simple to control it. If you want to control the rotation speed, you just control the voltage rate. So the more voltage that you apply to it or supply it to the uh, DC motor, the faster it will rotate, the less voltage you will apply to the DC motor, the slower it will get. However, if you supply a small rate, then it wouldn't be enough to rotate it. In here, you need to increase the voltage rate a little bit where you can have or we can reach the minimum rate of the DC motor itself. So depending on its rate, uh, you can basically control the speed. As we as mentioned, the more voltage, the higher rotation speed, the less voltage, the slower the DC motor is. What if we need the DC motor to lift heavy stuff or, or for something that we need it with a with, uh, bigger force than it can afford it? Basically, we can design a gearbox, which is covered in our 3D printing course. Uh, we cover how to control or how to design a, a gear, how to de design a gearbox, uh, and then uh, using the 3D printer, um, and then you can basically move it to a CNC machine or etc. But this is one of the one of the topics that we cover in our courses. The final thing to control is the direction of rotation, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, which can be done using uh, by by reversing the polarity. The polarity means, or the definition of polarity, uh, means basically to have the negative side applied to the positive side, and then the positive to the negative. So the wires, you just reverse their uh, direction, and then you will have the DC motor rotates either clockwise or anti-clockwise. It is pretty simple to control it. Uh, and these are the, all the stuff that you need to know about uh, how to control a DC motor. We'll move to a DC motor and how it works. The first thing we'll cover, what are the parts inside a DC motor? We have the stationary magnets, or which is called the stator. As you can see, it's a piece of magnet. And then the second part where we have the shaft that rotates. We have a spinning coil, or it's called a rotor, attached to it. Whenever you apply electricity to it, then a magnetic field will be created. The magnetic field will get affected by the magnet attached inside the DC motor and then it will create the magnetic field it will either attract or repel by the magnet so if it is attract let's say it moves clockwise and if it is rippled it will move anti-clockwise as we mentioned it depends on the uh, polarity of the voltage which can be driven by the current to simple or to simplify the, the, the method of, of the, the DC motor and how it works Basically, it works by inductive force. And then in here, the important part, why do we use a capacitor? As mentioned, we have the inductive force. So to cover it real quick, uh, we have coil, magnet. When you apply current into the coil, we'll generate a, a magnetic field. The magnetic field will basically either rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Simple as that. Right now, let's cover the pros and cons of the Prush DC motor. It is cheap, it is easy to control their speed, their polarity, etc. However, one of the cons of the Prush motor is it doesn't last too long. And to avoid this issue, basically we can use the capacitor. As we can see, the main reason is we have the brushes get damaged. So, why do we need a capacitor with a DC motor? There is a voltage spikes due to the inductive nature. So the voltage spikes, it is harmful for the DC motor. 
and then it is easily can be heard at the end of the video when we compare the DC motor with the capacitor and then the one without capacitor it is sold when we use the capacitor as mentioned in electricity or as you know in electricity we have the inductive and the capacitive modes they will work vice versa and then it is the same for the power system for the substation etc we need the, to control the capacitive and inductive uh, mode to, to get a clear power factor it doesn't matter if it is in electronics or in power system high voltage or, or electronic voltage which is the, the small rate so this is one of the most important things that you need to know or uh, main reason that we need to use a capacitor with in addition to that we need to filter the noise the noise is created by the inductive force and then it can be sold by the capacitor on the video we'll see a multimeter attached to a DC motor one of them with the capacitor and the other without the one without capacitor will see a reversed voltage which can be reached up to 1 2 point up to 1.22 volt and then this is one of the things that called the, the the noise and then we can filter by increasing the capa uh, the, uh, the capacitive rate or the the capacitor rate and here we're using the 10 nano farad into the uh, DC motor the more that we increase it the less inductive we'll have and then we'll apply the capacitor into the DC motor we'll see it reach lower rate it doesn't reach the one point wherever voltage it stays at lower rate and then the, as mentioned if we use a larger value of the capacitor then we'll control the the the, the noise that we we're getting when we don't uh, this is the simple uh, parts that we need to cover or this is the parts that we need to cover it is pretty simple uh, all you need to know uh, before you get your DC motor and then there is hundreds of, of applications that you need uh, that you can use the DC motor with Let's see, the, let's see the video. If you have any comments or you need to know any more information, uh, please leave a comment uh, below. And then uh, on the next video, we'll cover why do we need a diode with, a, with, with the DC motor. We'll see you soon.